because in the absence of the chief, you and I have signing authority. I never signed checks before. That's because Albert was already here before. He's not now. We can't not pay our bills. I mean, who knows when Albert's going to get back? He'll be back. Oh, are you so sure? We should wait. No, no, we need to fix the generator now. We need tires for the truck. We need office supplies, toilet paper, and I need my paycheck signed. You don't have a contract. No, but Albert said he'd renew it. We have a verbal agreement. What, you're not going to pay me because you think you might piss off Albert? I never signed checks before. Fine. Fine. I am on an extended leave of absence. Afternoon. I'm Arthur Curtis. Barrister and solicitor. I've been retained to represent Nathan Golo. Retained by who? Now, where is Albert, anyway? Come on, we got a pool going. I understand my client reports in here every day. Mm -hmm. You tell me where to find him? Letter! I've had a good look at the report to Crown Counsel and the witness statements. So you're here to tell us Nathan's going down hard? This won't go past prelim. He's guilty. He's not guilty of anything until it's proven in a court of law. And quite frankly, the only certitude you've established is that Nathan Golo was there with a lot of other people. He set up the booze can. He supervised the gambling. He hired the lookouts. Your eyewitnesses were either drunk or, uh, let's just say the family feud in this town is public knowledge. Chief Golo and his family are obvious targets. Uh -huh. The Crown intends to reduce the charges to found in. I'm sure they'll discuss it with you first, but all in all, not a good sign for the home team. Leonard, could you help Mr. Curtis find Nathan's cabin and then the motel? Just the cabin, thank you. I've got a plane waiting. You're a long way from Maple Leaf Gardens, Corporal. I beg your pardon? Saw you play right wing for the Prince Albert Raiders. When was it? Uh, 78? Oh, well. Not everyone makes the big time, eh? What was that all about? Oh, he's just letting us know he does his homework. Mm. Relax, man. I told you they're in Wolverine Lake. You ever think Nathan just wants me to think that? Who is he? Look, find out what he's doing here, but don't let on you know me. Huh? Oh, Jesus, just do it. I'll meet you in front of the meat shed in an hour. Go on! You don't know nothing about kids. What is this crap? Tip, Jer. The latest thing. We have to be selling these for 30 bucks to make a profit. $22.50. Doesn't justify the overhead. What overhead? A couple of shelves and a mirror. Rosie's boutique, huh? Forget it. This is as crazy as your idea to open up a barber shop. Salon. Salon. What do you want? Plain fun to sell. Where is he? What happened? I was making macaroni for lunch. Where's Daddy? He didn't come home? I'll be back in half an hour. Well, sure. Don't let business get in the way of macaroni. You're not allowed to cook when I'm not in the house. You want to burn the house down? We got hungry. You wait until me or Daddy is here. Nobody came home. Oh, 
Hi. Wayne got burnt today because you didn't come home. Are you okay? Mary fixed it up. They had to get me from work. You should have been here. Tuesday's your day. Why didn't you come and get me? I didn't want to get you mad. I'm sure she wants me to take her seriously. When it comes right down to it, kids come first. Well, her priorities are a mess, aren't they? I'm not saying neglect the kids. I mean, she just has to realize it doesn't come easy. How are you doing? All right. Can you tell me where I can find a native kid, maybe 18? Throw a rock. <laughs> Frank Corson, Native Studies, UBC. Uh, Sarah Burkett and Joe Goomba. Hey. Who are you looking for? Uh, forget his name. Um, I met him in Vancouver a year ago. TV. That's the guy. Does he owe you money or something? No, he gave me my thesis topic. TV? I volunteer at a drop-in center. One night, this kid comes in, gets a cup of coffee, and says something in Slavey. Thought it was Navajo. Cultural links between the Dene and Navajo. I heard he got in some trouble. Ah, oh, no, he's OK. Well, I mean, he's not dead. Where's TV? I don't know. Nice to meet y'all. Bye. Hey, Sarah, I gotta get a whiplash coming from an old guy like Albert to a kid like that. Well, wait till I get the hots for dried up old storekeepers. Sorry about the meeting. I got busy. We talked about Albert. Maybe he's not coming back. He'll come back. He's not here now. Just until Albert comes back. Me? No. I'm working on this book. I'm spending time with my family, and this would not be the right thing for me right now. What about the town? The town voted for Albert. You came in second. Even if I wanted to do this, the rules say that the councillor with the greatest number of votes is subchief. Me and Willie tied. We don't want to be chief. You'll do fine. Better to do it by the rules. So? He's asking about shit. He's from Vancouver. He's a student. Anyway, he was doing pretty good with Sarah. Who is he? Nathan, man, I didn't do anything. Then why do you keep running away? You're supposed to be a lookout. Leave him alone. Why did you rat us out? You let us down. <coughs> no. What's up? Been a while, huh? I've been keeping yourself. Who the hell are you? Frank friend of TV's. Right? No. Who the hell are you? Nathan. Nice to meet you. Get lost. I'm hurt, snowman. Really hurt. You told him we weren't friends. <laughs> know my name? Sure. Nevada. Uh uh. Frank. Got it. Is that your real name? Guess you're wondering why I'm here. Huh, Snowman? They were gonna lock me up for mugging that old lady. So you dropped a dime on me. There's no way I was going to jail for you. Anyways, I knew you'd get away. Lucky for you, I did. 
Relax, I'm only here researching my thesis. Right, with the gun? Comes in handy when someone's squeezing your throat. Nathan, you had this booze can set up in the bush, right? And I was guarding it? Anyways, you got busted, now they're blaming me. They got a reason? No. Tell you what, you give me a place to crash for a while, I'll watch your back. I don't know, man. I got a baby. You owe me. You owe me big. Three toughest jobs in the world, statistically. Air traffic control, retail, restaurants. We got two out of three right here. Raising kids is air traffic control, only worse. So Leon should have damped, right? It wasn't him who messed up. You want to go back to being a waitress, picking up tips, waiting tables? I'm going home. That uh, T-shirt uh, boutique thing. I know. Overhead. Found a supplier. Get us the same T-shirt, third the price. I thought you hated the idea. The idea's OK, but you got to be realistic. Look here. We buy in bulk a selection. Some ugly and cheap, some nice and expensive. Where? Warehouse Select, Edmonton. This one specializes in sports, this one in computer generated whatchamacallits. Anything for grunge bands? Hey, bright eyes. You gonna smile for me? You sure you don't mind? Yeah, if you don't mind potato chip crumbs in your bed. Hi, Bertha. Hi. Hi. You must be the student. Frank Corson. Stuff gets around fast, huh? Yeah. I'm Michelle Kennedy. You know TV from Vancouver? Hope you get what you need. What? Okay. Okay. Does he have some sort of problem with the cops? Probably something to do with Nathan. Testify? Forget it. Joey told me what happened today. Put Nathan in jail and you can stop worrying. Nathan's just pissed off because you caught him. If I testify, he'll cut me to pieces. We can protect you, TV. No. Anyway, why should I? Boost your arrest record? Because you've got a child growing up in this town. No go? No. I'm not surprised. We can subpoena him. He'll lie on the stand. You'll force him to perjure himself. Well, I'm not going to just let this fade away. No matter who gets hurt, right? You mean TV or yourself? Albert tried to exert improper influence on me, and it didn't work. It's a dead issue. Is it? Your shift. my soul. A visit from the co-sub chiefs. We signed your paycheck. <laughs> it's big of you. Don't you decide you need me after all? I need someone sneaky. <laughs> well, I'm gonna need a contract. Help or do it kill us? Tell Peter made you do it. Mm. 
for the kids. Sleep. You promised pizza. I was working. You're always working. Kids who want to see you, they have to buy something. That's not fair. You promised pizza. It's okay. We're learning to get along without you. Trouble sleeping? No, I thought I heard her crying. Must be great, huh? Having a kid. You got a good snowman. Yeah, right. What are you doing here? In Vancouver? You said this place isn't even on the map. It's perfect. I'm in trouble. What'd you do? Stole something. Pissed the guy off. I really pissed the guy off. And if I was on the run, I wouldn't come here. Like I said, perfect. <laughs> Only Nathan. Holy shit! Psycho! He threw, he threw a firebomb through the window. You see who did it? Any more on those who did it? You gonna do something? Well, are you? If I have to. Be smart, TV. Kyla could have been hurt. Or Bertha. Are you okay? We need to get to the health center. It's nothing. Tough guy? I'll see. Come with me. Gasoline in a bottle. I found some glass shards, but I doubt we'll get any prints off them. Oh, yeah, prints. I don't want you going anywhere near Nathan. Not with that attitude. My attitude? Hey, I'm not in Albert's pocket. Either lodge an official complaint or shut the hell up. I'll deal with Nathan. What is that? Yarrow leaves. It will itch tomorrow. What are we gonna do? I'm gonna kill him. Stop saying that. That's stupid thinking, stupid talk. Well, what am I supposed to do? Talk to Albert? Nobody's in charge. Michelle will do something. Maybe after we're dead. I've got to take care of this myself. You think going to jail for 20 years is gonna help your kid? Listen to Frank. I need some air. So you finished sucking up to that soup? I'm researching my thesis, remember? <sighs> Stay cool, snowman. So how long before you can go south again? Why? Man, you gotta take me with you. It's like really bad here. You don't know bad. Screw you, man. They almost got my kid. Okay. 
When? Hard to say. The guy ripped. He's got a long reach. Got a plate smart. Day? A week? Gotta stick it out here for a while. Take care of each other. You doubled your living allowance. You think we're idiots. Uh, guys, have you never heard of negotiation? A 7% increase is peanuts. Give them five. You got him in the ropes now, Harris. Four flights south? We'll give you two. That's the spirit. <clears throat> okay, boss. What's first order of business? To make Peter chief. What for? He knows how to do it. <laughs> Come on, between us, he can manage. Call a special meeting in the council. Hey, Leon. Where's Rosie? With her kids. What's with you? You're wrecking our family. <laughs> what did I do? You better stop. Stop what? All these big plans. Trips to Edmonton, business stuff. Hey, it's not like I'm holding a gun to her head. She's never home. You keep her late. Do you ever think she keeps me late? We're partners. It's not like the good old days when I could just... Tell her what to do. Get your own wife. your whereabouts last night, please? I was making your wife the happiest woman on earth. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't recall throwing a Molotov cocktail into a cabin where a baby was sleeping? People can't just sit around, play some cards, have a few drinks, and laugh their asses off. Be like me, a reasonable man. Give and take. I got a lawyer. He said... There's always these shitheads. Go bust clothes, boys, chops. He's got a gun. Anything else happens to anyone named Tenya, I will be very upset. Brian. reflect that this is an extraordinary meeting of the Lynx River Band Council and that all council members are present except Albert Golo. He'll be back. Maybe. In light of Albert's absence and as per the provisions of the Constitution, Sam Jika and Willie Sache are appointed acting sub-chiefs. Any problems? Me and Sam were not chief material. So Harris says we can appoint Peter to advise us. I said no. To be in chief? What's wrong with just advice? Those are just words. Harris found a loophole. Just doing what I was told. Was a time you wanted to be chief more than anything? Times change. So do people. A 
wad like Nathan threatens people, beats them up, starts fires. In my town, I don't think so. Your town? If TV hears, maybe he'll testify. Who are you? Whose side are you on? What the hell do you want from me, huh? How about a little trust here, huh, Michelle? Run down, what's his name? College boy. Frank Corson. You believe Nathan? Run him. See what it comes up. hoping they'd be here. The kids? I looked everywhere. The rec center. They're with Leon. Where's Leon? Fort Simpson. The housing interview. So, the kids? Yeah. I talked to him on the way to the extra. He's getting even with me. For what? For nothing. I've been working a lot. Rosie. It's only Michelle. Where's Frank? What's wrong? We need to talk to Frank. Oh, what's going on? Where's the gun? It's in my bag. It's not loaded. Okay, you're gonna have to come with this. You got bail? Sure. In a locker at Vancouver International. I'll go get the money somehow, all right? Under control, a snowman. Well, like you said, gotta hang together. I'll have you out of here in no time. I wouldn't kill none. The gun isn't real. Oh, we know. Then why'd you keep me locked up overnight? That's what happens to guys with stolen ID. Well, what are you? Frank Corson is a professor of anthropology at the University of British Columbia. The registrar got it wrong. I'm not faculty. Professor Corson was robbed a couple of weeks ago. The suspect was a native male, early 20s. Male prostitute. Street name, Nevada. Real name, Russell Pearson. So what brings you to Lynx River, Russ? I want a lawyer. What a surprise. Glad you're back. I'm not back. I'm not. Can't blame people for hoping. What I'm doing here is much more important than budgets, or proposals, or reports. Hey, it's our turn now. When Albert gets back, he's gonna kick your butt. Hey, Tito. Listen, uh, 
When are we gonna have that meeting about uh, you know, all that stuff we're gonna have that meeting about? Kids back yet? Nope. so knotted up about this, you know? They've always been able to count on you in the past. It's uh, chauvinism. You were always there. Now it's time to do something for yourself. Leon's got no right to get in your face. He's my husband, Jer. All I'm saying is he shouldn't let him get to you. He shouldn't have stole the kids. You don't know a goddamn thing. He doesn't know anything about the North. He thought he might need it for polar bears or something. Why are they keeping him in jail? Oh, that kind of gun, it's illegal. Is he a criminal? That's who. Uh, are you gonna lend me the money to bail him out or not? Who did you bring into our house? A college student, okay? The money? Go on home, and we'll be there in a minute. It's okay. You scared me. Surprised you even noticed. You scared me. I just want my wife back. That was mean. He's doing it on purpose. He's got no life. Nobody's waiting for him at home. So he finds ways to make you stay, keep him company. We never broke up over the booze, but if you ever take my kids away again. Why here? Why not Mexico or the States? I'm doing my thesis. Can't get rich hustling in Lynx River. You gonna tell me the only person you could run to is TV? TV? What a case. Could have made a fortune. Gold rush hour. Middle-aged white guys who want a piece on the way home. They like Indians because their skin is so smooth. Gotta let them see your ass and your package. Gotta make them think you're hungry for what they got to give. I mean... Look at these lips. The TV. Baby face tough guy. We almost had him. But you people just reached out and brought him home. Your friend, Professor Corson, dropped the charges. He wants you back. He seems to care about you. He's a trick. He wired you money. I'll take the money, but I'm not going back. 
And what about the gun thing? We're releasing you pending trial. He thought this place was as far away from the street as he could get. He's a hustler, Michelle. He ever spoke the truth, his tongue would catch fire. Good riddance. Now maybe TV will testify. on a beam. On my way to Ottawa, gonna be a big monkey muck. And then something happened. Couldn't sleep. Couldn't rest. All of a sudden, I see this kid. He's 12 years old. He's me, and he's scared to death. Sounds crazy, huh? The opposite of crazy. You know I never bought into this mystic stuff. But before I saw that kid, I was on the wrong path. And once I saw him, my path changed. I mean, it's, it's simple. Now, if I do what everybody wants me to do, I might lose all of that. What if doing what everyone wants is part of all that? Things got to be different, Jer. I've been thinking about that. It's stupid to have two people working all the time. I can work evenings because I don't got a family. And uh, I was thinking we could close half-day Sundays. I'm should hire a kid to do the really crappy work. What about Wayne? You want to come for dinner with us? Nah. Place won't run itself. came to get my bag. Hey, how'd you get out? Charges were dropped. What charges? Robbery charges were dropped. See a snowman? Hey, wait, I'm coming. Going where? To Vancouver. Just until this thing with Nathan goes away. He lied to me. I thought the truth would freak you out. Anyway. If I get out, Nathan will lay off of you and Kyla. I'll be back. Don't bother. I'm moving in with Michelle. What you doing? Waiting for a plane. To where? Where you got? Expecting a charter. You might get lift to Fort Smith. You want to come in? Joe said he'd take you out in the bush. Elsie said you were interested in traditional healing. I got an empty bunk. <laughs> you just want to be a good guy. Yeah. Hey, 
Nevada. You get us on a plane? I should stick around. Why? I got a court appearance on the gun thing. Oh, man, just skip on it. I'm tired of skipping. We can't stay here. This place is the shits. Jesus, kid. You gonna throw away everything you got because of a schoolyard bully? Kill the guy. Put him in jail. Quit waiting around for someone else to save you. I didn't ask you. Be a man. Like I'm gonna take advice about being a man? From some fag hustler? Hey. Get it where you can, snowman. I need you to cover for me, just for a day. Okay. I'm going to Fort Smith. I'm going to break it off. And then I'm going to tell my wife. I don't know if you'll ever like me, but at least we have to be able to trust one another. Good luck. Yeah. He'll be back. He'll be back. <laughs> Gonna be just like old times. That's what I'm afraid of. Maybe you should wait here, okay? She said she doesn't want to talk to you. Bertha! Tell her I'm sorry. Tell her I must have been crazy. Okay. Maybe tomorrow she'll change her mind. Maybe. 